What's happening, everyone? It's Marshall, and it's Sunday. It's Sunday night. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, coming a little earlier. This is a little bit. Uh, let's scooch that. Uh, there we go. And uh, welcome to my live show. I broadcast Sunday nights usually, so um, if you're interested, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell notification, you'll get the updates when I go live. And tonight I'm continuing on with uh, what I did last week, which was a look at some vintage um, audio interface, or audio uh, <laughs> DAWs, digital audio workstations. <laughs> now I had a, a few issues last week, and um, I did some reading and I found out what the problem was. The problem was actually uh, my hardware. So the, the computer I built was an AMD K63 processor, and I got to looking at why, like, so in the last video, we looked at Reason 2.5 from like 2003, I think that came out, on when, running in Windows 98. And uh, with a, I was trying to use the 003 as a MIDI interface. That failed miserably on the air, and we crashed a few times on that machine, and uh, a couple blue screens, etc. So <clears throat> then what I did is, in preparation for this video, and also to try and figure out what the hell was up with the MIDI, uh, I did a little bit of research, and the 003 is not compatible with K62 and K63 AMD processors. So I was like, shit, uh, what am I going to do? So it um, turns out that the Pentium processors are all compatible. So I took to Craigslist and offer up and started looking for somebody in the area that might have an old-ass Pentium 3 for sale for cheap. And I found a guy who had one for $20. So, and this is what I picked up here. This, uh, let's see, this guy. This is a Dell Dimension 4100. It is old as balls. It, I think it's 1999. It's a 733 megahertz uh, Pentium 3 in there. It's not even the fastest Pentium 3, um, but here it is. So, uh, this was a pain in the ass to get all the drivers. The guy that had this put Windows XP on it, uh, even though it originally came with Windows 98. So I put Windows 98 back on there, dug out, dug up all the drivers off the internet, and uh, well, about a day later, I have it up and running, hook up the 001 rack, and I actually picked up a MIDI man. This is the 4X4S, um, I believe, for serial. So this thing is... It, it, like so again this is before there was any kind of usb really i mean uh you had usb 1.0 on here uh i don't really know what people used it for because there wasn't really a lot uh, i think usb was kind of coming into its own before then you would use the printer ports the serial connections or um uh yeah the parallel port so anyway i'll see if i can maybe turn this around for you so Oh boy, yeah, I got a lot of wires here. Go spaghetti on this thing. So this is your parallel port um, that connects on the back of the PC, and then the configuration for this was really interesting. Uh, you have to literally go into DOS, uh, run your diagnostics on it, and it will. If you set it, it's kind of like the old school um, DOS gaming. Oh, that freaked me out for a second. The background there. Whoa. Anyway, if you go, like in the old school DOS days, like you would go and configure your sound card with the IRQ and the port number, it's the same thing with this. Like you have to go and set your IRQ, set your port number, and then there's something called delay time or something weird like that. Anyway, um, so that took me a good hour or so to try and figure out what the hell I was doing. And I did get it to work. It is working. And so what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to try and I've got bunch of my synths all set up here we're going to try and use the um the deep mind 12 which you can't see it's a little above and the um uh, mini moog and then the tr8 for percussion so and we'll see if we can record some stuff i've kind of been playing around with this a little bit here tonight and uh oh, let's go here and uh, uh i screwed something up i was trying to Get, make the thumbnail for this thing so I took a screenshot and it like screwed up the computer and I didn't save my Pro Tool session. So this is one of the problems, right? So no auto backup in these old uh, in the old Pro Tools. Um, 
So if you did not save your shit, you're fucked, uh, basically. And hold on here. I just turn my ringer down on my phone. Yeah, so let's launch this. Uh, oh, real quick, let me just show you the specs. Uh, we'll go properties. Uh, so we're doing, uh, does it tell me the processor on here? Uh, genuine Intel X, it doesn't say, but it's a Pentium 3 in here. It's 133 megahertz. We could reboot it, maybe. Uh, anyway, yeah, so and we're running 256 megabytes of RAM. That's just SD RAM in there. And, yeah. Let's just do a reboot. Why not? Oh yeah. Ta -da. Oh, no, no, yeah bitch. Let me get my keyboard for this. You'll see I'm boot up here. It will stop, I think, for a second, maybe. I don't know if this will even show the DOS menu, or we'll see. Maybe I broke it already. Oh, there we go. Something's happening. I oh, didn't even show it. What the F? Oh, well. Okay, well, anyways. It's a Pentium 3, I swear to God. Um, so, yeah, I reinstalled all the shit I had on the other, on the, um, on the K63 processor. Uh, the weird thing is, is, like, Reason acts kind of weird on this one, whereas it works fine on the K63 processor, like the demo tune that I played from Unknown Source, the Realization demo, and then trying to dick around. The uh, the Unknown Source demo won't even load on this computer for some reason. So, there's that, that's kind of weird. Come on, load. Um, and I have Recycle 2.5, but it's apparently not compatible with Windows 98. I think it's uh, 2000 or XP. I don't know. I tried to put it on there anyway to see what would happen, and it breaks. So. Here's my Pro Tools test. So rocking the Pro Tools 5.1.1, 001 interface. And I have been playing around with this for a little bit. So let me just show you what we have going on here. So this is wicked shitty. Um, the, one of the nice things in like the newer Pro Tools is you can color coordinate some of this stuff so you can see what is what. Over here is kind of your, it gives you a, kind of a better representation. These are auxiliaries with the little arrows and these are MIDI uh, with a little MIDI Dinsync uh, port looking thing. So um, I have, programmed a little loop here on the TR8, oops, and it's this one, and so we can loop this uh, in our transport, right, and I have no idea how that sounds on the low end, it might sound like S, I don't know, so then we have our mini Moog over here, let me just make sure this is all set up right, so... MIDI Moog, is this the MIDI? Yeah, so, and the MIDI Moog is plugged into number two. So that's there, and then output two. Now I only have a handful of MIDI cables. Um, I actually only have four of the, the classic kind. For, and the main reason for even having those is for the Nord modular, uh, micro-modular. Um, everything else I use is, is USB usually, so I'm even lucky I have some of these MIDI cables. But, uh, yeah, so now what we need to do is come over to the uh, mini Moog over here, and let's see if we can get some sound out of it. Yeah. 
I got that delay turned way up. So we're getting sound. But I'm not seeing MIDI come through now. I think you have to enable recording for me. Start to show. So here's a this was the other thing that was hard to tell. Like where is the fucking record button? Took me a couple minutes. Cause it's not like a different shape or color. It just says wreck on it. Okay, we're gonna. Oh, let me just check something. Uh, I had changed something in the B clock. Uh, yeah, we'll turn that one off. See if that does anything. No. Hey, uh, okay, so this is this was working before I screwed everything up earlier. So let's just save this. Let's close it, and I'm gonna do another quick redo. Um, so yeah, this is kind of a nightmare still again. I mean, Pro Tools I found to be touchy a lot of times anyway, working with it over the years. Uh, I started on version 6.9 back in, when did I get Pro Tools? 2006, I think. It may have been a little earlier than that even. So I'm going to do a full shutdown. This should reset the MIDI man, which is probably pissy right now. There we go. So I see the lights came on on the front of this thing. Um, you, there you go. You see these? These are on. So then we're going to fire it back up. <laughs> we'll see if it comes back. Wicked spacey man. All right, let's see. Let's look her up again. Uh, the next thing about this is, I mean, this is, I think, one of the earliest versions of Pro Tools that they sold where you had, you know, kind of kind of targeted at the home studio mus musician person. And uh, let me just see. It's, I mean, at its core, it, like, Pro Tools has not changed all that much. Which is kind of nice. So since I've been since I used Pro Tools for freaking ever, um, it's not super alien to me. Although it is, you know, a little different. This is harder to find shit. There we go. You see? Oh, we got MIDI action. Oh, look at that. We got some MIDI going on over serial port, fellas and ladies. If any ladies watch the show. Okay, so we got that one. Now I want to also set up the DeepMind 12. So we've got a, an auxiliary for the Moog. We've got auxiliary and MIDI for the TR8. Uh, and then let's we've got MIDI here. So let's put this as DM12 MIDI. And I'm typing on my regular keyboard. <laughs> Uh, too many keyboards. Okay. M12, MIDI. And this is, this is something that's neat that I kind of wish they had in other DAWs is the ability to add little notes on here 
Uh, I always like to be able to put like a note like, oh, I'm using this patch number on this synth kind of thing. So if I come back to this and like years later and I'm like, what the what sound did I use for that? And, uh, you know, if you were trying to re redo something and you wanted to, you know, recreate the audio from scratch using your MIDI sequence, you could kind of leave some notes for yourself, which is nice. So that's that's nice having that in here way back then. Uh, so let's go, we can go file, new track or control shift N, which has been the same for years. So I have this hooked up to a stereo track for the, um, for the D mine 12. We're going to go analog three, four. Uh, we won't, so the busing, like, it's nice to see that there's busing in here because we can route what will end up happening is once I have some sequences laid down of MIDI and I want to, you know, basically export those as audio, like rendered audio, then I can come in here, I can route through the bus to an audio track and record the audio once I have everything set up. So that's all still the same. I mean, this is actually pretty impressive. Aside from the advancements in just general connectivity between uh, equipment, um, it's, it's not that different. It, you know, the interface looks a little more polished these days. And like I said, with some color coding, but even down to the load screen on here, like it's very, it's, it's Pro Tools. I mean, it's literally the same shit for the last however long. So, oh, you can hear that, that buzzing coming in. And then you can hear, is that the TR8 making that noise? Uh, all right, so we got that one, we got that one. Let's check the DeepMind 12 and see if we have some sound from that bad boy. That's still good. Let's go over there. And look. All right, but I don't have MIDI. And again, you have to arm the track for this. So let's go here and let's hit the record. Do you see it coming? So the DeepMind 12 is coming into input 4. So did I switch these over to the Mini Man 4? Here we go. So we'll go 4 and 4. Uh, let's play again. Yeah, Rocket Man, Rocket Man. All right. So now we can record some fucking MIDI. Man, now the shitty thing is because I only have a total of four MIDI cables. Um. These are all, like, some are plugged into the output, like the TR-8 is plugged into the MIDI out, so I'm sequenced from Pro Tools already, and that's running into the TR-8. Um, but then the Model D and the DeepMind 12 are um, set up on the inputs on the MIDI man so that I can play my sequences, get the MIDI recorded, and then I'll have to manually switch the cables into the output position so that I can then push it back out to the synth. Um, which wouldn't normally you would have just have more cables, but I don't have enough cables, so that's why I have to do. All right, well, so let's um, let's start with the mini Moog and let's try and record a couple of loops for that. And let's see, let's see, will this trigger on MIDI? That was the other thing that you used to be able to do. Nope. Well, that's not necessarily true. There's probably, I'm guessing this is that. Let's see what happens. Okay, I don't know what the hell that is. So 
loop. Now this should loop for me here on the drum pass. Now I don't know if this is gonna destructively record shit. Like, that might be kind of weird. So let me go over here. I've got a super long delay on, on the mini mode. Let me make this bigger. So and this is also something that's been in Pro Tools since I was using it, and it's even in here back in the day. Uh, the ability to make jumbo uh, windows. Where is is that a note? That's a note right there. My mouse does not work with the scroll wheel, so that's kind of shitty. Uh, uh, so I don't, uh, it must have overwritten a MIDI. Uh, it's probably, like the way it works in Pro Tools nowadays is if you are doing loop recording like that, it will dump your MIDI tracks into, how do I make this fucking bigger? Seriously? This is, uh, no, 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 no. I don't want to find, I want to expand you so I can read the name here. So here's a MIDI clip. Let's toss this on here. Oh, that's my drums. <laughs> okay. Loop. No. Ow, get off. Oh, here we go. But, oh, we only have one. What the fuck? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this. We're going to come up here, and we're going to check Control-D for duplicate. Oh, and it works. Look at that shit. And then double-click on the window. There, whoa, see? That's just like Pro Tools now. Let's just get, like, a good long bunch of this stuff. Let's see, one, two. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that should be enough to play around a little bit and see what happens. <laughs> this is dinosaur man. All right, uh, let's try and record this shit again. Uh, the other thing is like, there's no VSTs in here, like no soft synths. Uh, this is like some effects plugins and they're demos. So like the maximizer and like a delay and a reverb and shit, they're all like 15 day trials, um, which I don't have keys for. So uh, like probably, well, and that's fine because this is just a demo of like old shitty DAWs. But uh, let's see. So we'll start with the mini Moog and we'll get the MIDI for the mini Moog. Oh, we should probably label this real quick. Oh, ox. <sighs> okay. I'm thirsty real quick. It's super hot in here, too. And a couple puffs on the vapor pen real quick. Fuck. Oh, it's hot in here. Yeah, so we'll, I'll, I'll just kind of jam around. And like, I was even doing like some two handed playing earlier which I can't do very well especially like I'm right-handed and so I want to play like the mini Moog on my left hand since that's you know one finger notes and then on the um dm uh the dm12 I was wanting to do chords but I was like trying to do it like this and yeah like tangle yourself up it sucks so anyway we'll try and do them like one at a time So we'll go back over here. So I dicked around. I have like a little patch that I made on each one of these. And uh, we'll try and play to the beat a little bit. Uh, the quantizing shit, like, to be honest, like, I've never understood quantizing very well. So I just tend to not use it. 
Um, if I need to tighten something up, I'll usually manually you know, go back in and do it that way. So we should be armed to record on our mini Moog. Let's hit record and play. And let's try this again. Let's see if it'll work. Yo, Kalfu, what's up, man? I see you in the chat, buddy. Yeah, I mean, I know quantizing, snap to the grid, blah, blah, blah. But like every time I try and like run quantizing on anything I do, it never snaps it to the right parts of the grid. So I'm just like, fuck it, man. All right, so let's do this. So since I've got some uh, Moog bass in there, I'm going to switch this uh, um, MIDI man back over to input mode. Um, so this is the mini Moog, I think. Yeah. So we'll switch this to output two. Now the stuff that we just recorded, we'll go back in here and let me, um, I'll switch back over to this and then I got to switch the thing on the mini Moog to the output or to the input, I mean. Okay. Pain in the ass. All right, now let's see if this will play back my shitty playing. Yeah, and we have it working. No blue screens. I wonder what the CPU is running out on here. I just want to side chain the shit out of that too. That's the other thing. Automation, right? Uh, do we have automation? Yeah, look at this. Is a mod wheel? I didn't touch the mod wheel. Actually, I don't think the mini Moog even transmits mod wheel uh, messages. Um, itch, no. Velocity, yeah, so we got some velocity change. So like that, I think that's how I have the filter mapped right now is to the velocity. Okay, so this is all still the same in Pro Tools. You pick for your automation here. You know, or whatever is recorded. If you have a synth that's got some CC controlled signals. And uh, looks like you can still send program change. Uh, and then your controllers, can you add? Yep, okay, so this is still the same too. Shit, man. So Pro Tools has it going on, man, 1998, or whenever this came out. Um, 
you could do all the same shit you can do now. Like the only difference again is like from my perspective is the connectivity to the computer itself. And obviously, oh, and it's still going. Uh, the connectivity to the computer with your gear is a lot easier nowadays. And uh, obviously the um, 64 bit operating systems allow for like much higher amounts of RAM. Like, so the way I think this works in Pro Tools is it cache, caches off the disk, like streams from the disk, I think, if that makes sense. I'm pretty sure that's how they do it. Um, because this machine only has 256 megabytes of RAM. That's not like not anything. And it's so far it's doing okay. Now I haven't recorded any audio yet, but we'll see how that performs in a little bit. So let's try and like tighten up like just a little bit of a loop in here. For the mini mog, and then I'll get on the top on the DM12 and uh, do some work on that. And see how that sounds. Uh oh, Cal Food says that we should expect to see some blue screens of deaths uh, after about four tracks of audio laid down, um, which <laughs> uh, wouldn't surprise me. So we've got. We can get three with the synths, and then I can probably um, get the TBO3 in here, and then I guess we could do like a second layer of DM12 or something else. Um, uh, yeah, anyway. So let me find a spot where this sounds halfway good. The, this is being upscaled to 1080p, like, and it looks like ass, like, with the grid. I don't know if that's showing through. It's, like, weird yellowy. And it's because I have this, like, shit cheap Chinese scaler. I need to get a different one. Like a nice Extron or Crestron uh, scaler would be nice. All right, so let's play this. How do I? Oh, can we still go like this? Bam. Yes. So that's all the same. That's so, that's cool. I'm like surprised. digging that actually so let's can I put this in like here we go uh blocks oh that don't show me nothing man can I so like I think in Pro Tools now you can do like you can have it show the clips which is a lot easier to see what the hell is going on but so what we'll do like I want to do a little bit of a little mini intro this and then let's just take all this shit and then drag it. Oh, this is impossible to see on this. Come on, dude. Like, am I negative now? That's the other thing. I don't know how this works on here. Could you do a control A? Let's see, does that highlight all? Yeah, there we go. So looks like we're on like four.
Oh, thanks, Cat Food. So, Cat Food's saying, if we want to avoid blue screens of deaths, just record the MIDI tracks to the previously recorded audio tracks, then mute the previous audio tracks while recording the new MIDI material. Um, yeah, so we'll see if we can... I don't know, I want to see if I can make a blue screen, actually. And then, yeah, then we can see if it'll... We can find a way around it. We'll see how long we record. I start a little earlier tonight in case we want to, in case I go for a while on this. Oh, by the way, <laughs> so my that DX7 video I have on my channel where I smash one is actually a broken one, but um, somebody posted that on a DX7 forum on Facebook that I'm in. And I saw it, and I was like, oh, shit. And those guys are just crying big time. It's funny. It's like, dude, the DX7 sucks, man. And it's like, I'm not knocking FM. Just the DX7 is a piece of shit. That's my opinion. So cry about it. I don't care. All right. Let's just do something useful. I'm just going to take this part out, and then... Wrong freaking keyboard again. So this section here sounds pretty good. So we will. Um, I want to scooch it. Can I just? How about if I go like this? Let's see if this will work. I'll take these two. Ah shit balls. It's hard to see the lines on here. And then I'm gonna do a Control E. Used to be how you. Yeah, so I can set up a region. I guess I'll call it like um, mini mob one. Now, if I go into this, I go to regions. There, now we have this region. Now I should be able to take this and just scooch its ass all the way over here. And did it miss the front part? Hey, Kalfu, do you know, uh... <laughs> Kalfu says he'd smash a DX7 too. Thank you, man. <laughs> Anyone who hates the DX7, go give me some love on that video right now, because it's got like 30 dislikes right now. <laughs> anyway, um, synthesizers like politics, man. I swear, if you say something about something that somebody loves dearly, it's like bunch of hate man anyway but it's true the dx7 is awful so uh yeah hey cow food i was going to ask you since you're in here do you know like i know that there's like a separate pop out midi editor in uh pro tools now does this have one of those or is it just this stupid thing in here that's kind of hard to mess with And while you're waiting to, I'm waiting for the, this is a delay. So while I do wait for him, um, that's the other thing. Isn't there, it's like a, a way to scale these up and down. Yeah, I mean, this is like, that's one thing about Pro Tools is kind of shit too, is the, uh, the way you deal with MIDI is really kind of cumbersome compared to things like Avid or um, Ableton Live. And then let me see, what's my grid set at? Um, my eighth notes is the sixteenth notes. Yeah, I'll go back to eighth notes for now. I'm going to turn that delay down for a second. Oh, okay, so CalFoot's never worked in Pro Tools. Yeah, like, so, like, I'm going to probably do another one on Reason again now that I've got a working machine. I don't know if you caught the beginning of the show, uh, CalFoot, but the problem was uh, I was running the 003 interface on a uh, AMD K63 processor, which is not compatible with the 003, and uh, so the MIDI, MIDI interface didn't work. Um, 
And then when I tested Pro Tools on there, I couldn't even get audio to work on it. So I bought a shitty Dell, um, um, was it Dimension 4100 or something for $20 with a Pentium 3 in it. K time, turn the decay time down. There we go. Oh boy, why did I hit? What is that? Time properties. Oh shit. Okay. I keep hitting something, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Possible to see what's going on, and I can't scroll down. How do you, how do you do that? So now, ah, uh, this is a nightmare. Look at this. So I'm trying to scroll down in the MIDI window, and it's not letting me scroll down. Oh, fuck you. Uh, now I'm hitting the wrong buttons over here. Now, so this this is like a zoom. Right here, there was like, in Pro Tools now you have a little button that's like right up here, down here, and it's supposed to let you, so that's the open and close. Is this, no, that's the stupid arrows. Anyway, to where you can kind of zoom in and out on this a little bit, and there's a different kind of MIDI editor, or like one that you can pop out and see your notes easier. Let's see, is that even in here? Um, show MIDI event list. Now this is something I I don't recall being in Pro Tools now. Yeah, I mean this this is it. This has to be it. And I can't. It's like it's cutting off, and I can't scroll down. You see this shit. So how am I supposed to edit my notes then, here guys? Yeah, let's add to notes. Let's go like jumbo and then extreme. I'm fucking having the scroll wheel not work is this thing. A real problem for me right now. Oh, there we go. Look at this. I found it. Fuck. How stupid is that? It's a little tiny arrow at the bottom of the... Uh. <laughs> That's terrible. That's piss poor UI right there. And then you can't, like, I can't center it. <laughs> I can't center it on here. Enough dicking around. Let's get some music in here. Here these look like these. The way this looks in here reminds me of like the little bricks in Super Mario. They look like they. Oh, let's do this. I do like that they they have the multi tool selector in here. That's something that I use all the time in Pro Tools and. Pretty cool that it's it's available all the way back into five point whatever. So and I think five oh one was the first version to come with uh, the double oh one interface, which was Windows and Mac compatible. Using a PCI card. Come on, you man. All right. See this is where quantizing would probably help. All right, let's see if that sounds anywhere like I was playing. Oh, let's go back here and do zero. Oh, so the slide on, 
Um, so if we want these to tr or decay, I'm sorry, glide. So if we want these to trigger, they cannot overlap. Um, now with the, with the decay turned up, it's not a big deal, but... that one so the like yeah that's why that's like fading out though uh, something going on with this one why are you not triggering got a velocity issue what was I gonna I go solo See how it just like skips that one? That's weird. Well, what we could do is go back and connect to this. And I'm gonna take it out. So the other thing that sucks is now you can just double click on a note and it disappears. And now you have to like select it and then like hit the delete key. Like what is that? I gotta use my hand. It's like a baby's toy. Uh. Wow, so that didn't work at all. I screwed something up. So let's try this. I think I know why. Take these and I'm gonna zoom in and then I'm gonna go with this guy and then we're gonna change our grid to that. And I'm just gonna trim the ends. Dink. There you go. So that's that one. Oh, come on. Okay, here it is. Oh, man, you ass butcher. No, I'm not clicking on Like, I don't click on it twice, and it thinks it. Okay, so we'll go loop um, any mode loop one. All right, and then we'll go with this one. See, I think in Pro Tools now, you don't have to uh, label these. It does it for you. I can't see this line. Oh, come on. Stop clicking on it, me. It's funny, like, when I was looking for what DAWs to do for this, I found a... Like, it was like a... It was like a tutorial video or a promotional video from uh, from DigiDesign about the 001 in Pro Tools 5. And, like, it was the cheesiest shit ever, but it was, like, super well done in terms of, like, they walk you through almost everything with the whole Pro Tools interface. Um, and as cheesy as it was, it was actually really helpful. It was, like, going through a nice little refresher for me on Pro Tools because it's pretty much the same. Uh, but I just thought that was pretty easy. If I can find it again, I'll put a link in the video uh, description when this gets published. Move to... Okay, so now... Now let's see if we can go into... Uh, no. Regions. And I can move these around a little bit because I think I want to start with this one. sure if those lined up but we'll see what happens here so let's play can we play more
is something I want to do real quick. I'm going to do some... do some MIDI clips for the percussion as well. So we'll do this and I'll do a control E. Does that do anything? All right. Oh shit. So we got a couple of regions. All right. So let's delete that one. Whoa, why is there stuff there? All right, so then I'll go back into this one. crashing there. life. Hey, Kalfu, thanks for stopping by, man. Appreciate, appreciate you in here, man. Regular basis, nice. gap there is a gap that will let water out scooch your ass over A nice loop growing.
right, so let's go over to the Deep Mine 12. Do the Deep Mine 12. And um, see if we can find something cool there to play top of all this. Um, I don't know how to turn on Destructive Record. There we go. You just click on it. Right click. Uh, that's the D. <laughs> Give it the D. So now I should be able to just loop record over what I make and have it erase what I don't want, I think. We'll see. I don't know how that's going to work on a MIDI on here. but uh, So we will medium size that, and then we will value size this one into extreme mode. And then um, just because the freaking grid is driving me nuts, I'm just going to put this in regions mode. And then, um, I don't know if that's going to matter, but... I can hear, I can hear the MIDI clock is starting to pop up a little bit. Entangled in wires. throw an EQ on that and cut the lows. It's definitely having a hard time with the um, Model D. So on the auxiliary, I'm going to add a four band EQ and I'm going to take, fuck, this is the, uh, I guess, like not having a visual representation of what I'm doing is horse shit. So this is Oh I see. Let's uh that I think that'll do it, maybe.
right. A couple of loops in there. Oh, you know what we have to do now? Ah, we gotta change back the cables on the D512. Um, I gotta take my headphones off first. Cable going. Four. Loop back. Into one. Fuck. See, the USB is so nice. It'll do in and out, bi directional. Single cable. Fucking nineties. Now this should play back, I think. Pretty well.
push something. I don't know what it does. But it lit up over here, and I'm kind of scared. All right, so we've got some Deepmind 12 shit now. Is it showing? Oh, we just have the one. Okay, that's fine. Whatever you want, boss. So let's make a region. See if I can copy this down here. Can I get all the way out here? Let's copy it back here just in case. Uh, is there notes there? There's something there. Oh, but it's probably way lower in the spectrum. Bring it over here and park it right there. And let's um, oh, see. Let's go one click on that, one click on this, and go to. Oops. And then we're gonna have to use that stupid little tiny button again. Man, it's like gonna take us like six hours to get anything done. All right, so the, since this is way the F down here, we need to scooch it way up. This is really shitty. Come on. All right, so we need to go up just a little bit more. It's an F. For failure. All right. One little tiny thing. our nudge feature let me
in progress in I got a stuck note.
There's a stack note. Let's see, control period. Control alt period. Idea and stack notes. MIDI off. All notes off. Control shift period. That's what it is. used to be this weird thing if you go and control V in an area like up here it would wipe all your other notes out instead of just pasting them in there so I've, I want to take all these and I want to put them on this other section but I don't want it to wipe out the notes above So let's delete that, and how about we record some freaking audio? So we just have the high parts here on this. Region, so it's easier to see. button I pressed so uh yeah uh, grid no that's group how do I turn a grid back on damn it play
Oh, I hit slip. That's why. Okay, up here. So we gotta go back to grid. Jesus, that freaked me out for a second. How did I even hit that? That's odd. So what we gotta do here is go back into our mix window. We need to create a couple audio tracks. Go, no, troll. Shit, man. And we will say we want to have ourselves a couple of new tracks. So we want two new tracks. We're gonna do one for the bass and one for the uh, Deep Mind 12. We're gonna go stereo. We'll see if this works. And we'll go audio track and we'll go create. And there we are. There's our two tracks. So we'll go we'll call this one Mini Moog. Base. Check for your bum. Mm, mini base. Oh shit, this is a good cap. Base audio, okay. This one. Get a close. DM12 Synth 1. Okay. Now what we need to do is use our buses and route the auxiliaries into the audio tracks. Then we can um, uh, record some different shit. So let's... Oh, I hit the wrong thing. What the... Found it. Don't panic. Don't panic. All right, so we want to go. See, this is fucking hard to see is the problem. And this all looks like a cluttered mess over here. So um, what I normally would do well, to try and keep myself from confusing myself, uh, let's take this. Move it over here. Does this even move? Come on, get off of there. That's a deep mind twelve. Okay, cancel. Yeah, move your ass over here. Come on, move down here. Move down here. Please. Move. Move. It doesn't move. Here, real quick, before we screw something up, I'm gonna save this. Deep Mind 12, move, move. Oh, Jesus. See, that is not working very well. <laughs> Can I move this one over? There we go. All right, so audio, auxiliary, MIDI. So, yeah, okay. So now they're grouped. So we're going to take the output from this, and we're going to run it into a bus, bus 1 and 2, and then we're going to take the input here, and we're going to bus 1, 2. There you go, cowbunga dude. And then we gotta do that for the mini mode auxiliary. Where's the audio for that one? All right, let's try and get these in the same order so that we don't confuse ourselves. So we have MIDI, auxiliary, audio, MIDI, auxiliary, audio. Normally, what I would do is I would group everything as like all my MIDI is one section, all my auxiliaries are another, and all the audio is a separate one. And probably as this progresses, it will get to that. But it's so hard to differentiate what is what because there's no color coordination. Uh, that sucks. So, anyway, uh, we'll see if we can get this to blue screen like uh, Calfood was saying. And then, actually, you know what we should do is we should make another one for the TR-8. Normally, I don't record all the drums as one big thing like this, but just for shits and giggles... Um, I would kind of like to see this thing crash. So what 
gonna try and throw all these at it at the same time. So go TR8. Switch. So remember, it goes MIDI auxiliary audio, MIDI auxiliary audio, MIDI auxiliary audio. So here's the aux. We need to go from here through the bus. Three, four, input, bus. Three, four, and then do our MIDI mode. Auxiliary. Go bus. Five, six, okay, and then audio in from bus five, six. Now we should be able to record here and record here and record here. All right, so we're going to do three at a time recording for the loops that we have. Um, again, I'm pretty surprised at the workflow is fairly similar to modern Pro Tools. It's just, uh, I don't hear anything. You guys hear anything? I don't fucking hear shit. Oh, oh, I know why. I know why. We have to hit the record button. All right, so let's go zero. And then I'm going to do like a torture test. So we're going to go re record this time and play. Yes! I think that works. All right, so now what we're gonna do, let's just play it back. So we have three tracks all recorded, which is uh, pretty freaking impressive for this, the hell, this day and age of 1998, whatever the hell this was. I want to make sure they're all record disabled. Oh, I can't see the bottom one. There we go. Okay, so now we should not be monitoring inputs from the auxiliaries because there's a bus routed to our recording channels. So if I if I listen to like a section, it should be playing back from the audio parts. So we recorded. Oh, oh yeah! Processing is conflicting with other CPU tasks. If this occurs often, try reducing the hardware buffer size in the hardware setup panel. I remember seeing that shit all the time in Pro Tools back in the day. Let's see if we'll do it again. So we only have three tracks of audio, and actually what we could do... Yeah, it will not get to the end. Um, stop beeping at me, Windows 98. I want to bring up the, uh, the screen, the, not the task manager, the, uh, what's it called? Is it the system info screen? Maybe it's this. No, that shit's not it. That's not it. Pulled it up in the last video, but. So 
System Tools. Uh, I don't even see it. I thought there was like a... Way to monitor the system resources. Apparently, I, I may not have installed that. Oh, I thought it was this basic uh, feature in here. Maintenance wizard, drive converter, disk defragmenter. I haven't ran a defrag in a zillion freaking years. Um, well, I guess we do not get to see the CPU um, fluctuations because I can't find the... I don't know. I don't know what happens there. Anyway, since there's no task manager, you know, there was a CPU meter that I was looking at on my other, my K6 PC. I don't know why that's not on here. That's kind of weird. Um, all right. Well, let's see if we can screw with this buffer size a little bit. So that in Pro Tools is you have to go into here somewhere. Uh, set up hardware playback engine. Yes. And I have, okay, here, this is why. Let's, let's put our CPU usage up to like 85. We were only at 65 there. All right, and then let's save this again. Save session. Now that should hopefully play back. it still. first loop in the audio playback so let's see what else what else can we do here try and oh, we have 85 percent we could increase the buffer size well that's at the maximum already that's at 85 other options what else can we do here oh, shit in there that's gonna help us um so again let's make sure we save our session Set up uh, buffer size. I think we're at a two. We could change this to that. I can't remember if going up or down helps. Yeah. You pro tools. Oh, no. So we only have th three things of fucking audio. Uh, and I'm going to make this even harder on it here in a second because I'm going to start doing save the AE buffer size. Let's bring it up to eight. All right. And what else can we change? Uh, disk allocation. Um, that's okay. Can't do that with tape. Yeah, we cannot play.
our we can't even play our whole loops there. Um, hold on, let me go back in here. Five, we're at maximum sample rate. Let's go. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, this is in there. Hardware. Why is it? Turn this on twice. Let's change our buffer size down to like. Gets all the way to the end and it dies. I don't get this. That's all right. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna kick this thing right into balls here in a second anyway. Um, first thing I want to do actually is I want to re-record this from the uh, not the mini mode but from the um, DeepMind Twelve because um, I want to do it without any effects on it. So real quick, we're gonna delete that. Bam. I like these sections up here just so that we have a looping area and then we're going to play back. Okay, we're going to make that destructive. And I'm going to go back over to D my 12 and I'm going to turn the effects off. We're going to try some built-in processing in Pro Tools. See if we can, because it's, you know, it's like you're not supposed to record the effects on your shit. I'm going to keep unplugging myself. Did it, did it stop again? What happened? Can I do loop record? That's a, the P is punching. So this should just record over that. reverb and then I had some release on there that I shut off so well time it down leave the chorus on I'll turn the plate reverb off
Yeah, we did. Disable the MIDI on that track. Here, let's do a quick state file save. Mute? Yeah, let's mute the MIDIs. That, that might save us a little bit of resources. See, they touch anything and it just like, kills it. supposed to match up normally you can do it in intervals of you know musical intervals like quarter notes eight notes um, etc but doesn't look like you can do that on here
There we go. It's the delay feature here. Compressor. I know it keeps killing us, but it's it's not too bad. So let's do this. So I wanted to see if we can sidechain, but uh, yeah, let's do that. So let's go to our TR8 and let's solo out the kick drum and then just let's just do a recording of just the kick. So we're just going to go ahead and um, we're just going to mute that one. And can we do another audio track? Okay. Audio track. And if you notice here, like I can go from mono to stereo in an audio track, and with the bus routing, even though right now I'm connected to the TR8, just mono, like one, one uh, input there, it's uh, it's not a big deal because um, when you uh, when you set up your busing, you can bus a mono track out to two channels, and then you have stereo. Although on percussion, it's not a huge deal. Although I tend to make everything stereo anyways. Uh, so here's our audio one. Let me just rename this to kick. One. Kick one, baby. Kick one, stalker. All right. And we're, so we've got that muted. Uh, and then we need to make sure we change our busing uh, back to the TR-8 into that new audio kick track that we have here. So we got bus three, four, so we need to change the input on this to bus three, four. Cowbunga dude. And then, um, yeah, let me, I think, 
Now, normally what I would do is I would have separate MIDI tracks for each sound or each section of sounds, like kicks would have one, uh, hi-hats would have one, snares would have one. But since, like, we obviously are going to be limited here, what I'm going to try and do is on the tier 8, I'm going to try and just mute um, those other instruments. And... Um, I think that'll do the trick. Here. Some of these little snary things. Snary things. Snary things. Record. Play.
let's do this again, but I'm going to do it with a, just a regular record, I think. So make sure we get the whole thing. Thanks, Nikki. Come on, come on. See, I hit the wrong button. Uh, there we go. Let's do it again. Take seventy-eight. Last little in there from the snares. All right, so let's just rename this to snare TR8 snare. Here, we can just take that out. Snares, baby snares. And then let's do another one. Uh, let's see, what is it? Control Shift N. We'll do another stereo track. Audio track, and actually, we should do two more. So we have one for high hats, one for our crash. Let's just really piss this thing off here. So we'll call this snare and burn. Crash override. That's better. Crash. And we'll call this high hat one. So um, now we need to route all these other audio tracks to three and four. Bus three and four. Bus three and four. Okay. Now, so we'll do the hi hats first, and then we'll do a loop record again. So that I can get those dialed in.
Crash, baby. Get some crash in this bitch. That's kind of loud. What did she say? We got a crash, we got our hi-hats. Um, that's so, so we got some percussion coming along, which is nice, kind of uh, complement the melodies. So let's go back over here and let's do a little bit of processing on some of these sounds. So the first thing I want to do over here is add on the snares, um, a little bit of EQ. Now I'll take the frequency down to like here and then we're gonna take the gain all the way down.
sure what that's supposed to do here. So let's see if we can do some side chaining on the mini mode. Uh, so let's go here, let's make a compressor. And then I saw the little key, it's still a key here. Can I, uh, what does that do? Nothing. Ah, so here we go. So now we can take this and go from, oh, wait a minute. Um, can I not, uh, Oh, do I have to make a bus on here? So, kick drum. Shit. Uh, looks like we can do side chaining. You know what we could do is we could duplicate our kick drum. Can we, can we copy this? Duplicate? Oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I wanted. I want to take this section, take the kick, and I want to... Can I duplicate you? Edit. Uh, oh, here we go. So we'll select this track. Edit. Alt-Shift-B. Okay. So we'll call this one side chain. How about that? Side chain. Cowbunga. And actually, we probably want to do this towards just a 4 4 straight up. So let me zoom in here on this. What does it look like? Yeah. else very nice I really want control D to fit that view okay and then we're just gonna run this to a bus so that you can't hear it but that we could route it into the compressor that we just made uh, so side chain let's put it on bus let's see so we don't have that many buses on here and probably like I think now you can get into the 30s like 34 this is like half the buses and probably half the tracks so let's see where's our mini moog audio it's auxiliary audio right here here's our compressor now we can go to bus I guess technically we only need one right so let me just uh Put on 16. I usually use the very last bus that you can have. That way it's highly unlikely that you will run out of spots. Uh, oh, because it's a stereo track. That's all right. Whatevers. Whatevers. Oh, shit. Now we're not doing stuff. Now it's not loving me. Boop. Okay. Oh, that's hating me. Okay, now you're now you're being a dick. Here, let's save this. Yeah, 
Uh, I think we might be screwed unless we turn down the. Uh, we could turn this down. Oh shit! No, nope, that's as low as it goes. That's the highest sample rate we can have. Uh, we could turn this down a little bit. Let's see what that does. Normally you want higher buffer size, but maybe that's what we're fighting here. Ah, I can hear it ducking a little bit. Threshold down. Turn the crack down. Turn the bass down. It hates me right now. Should not be able to hear you. Switch back to channel. You should be silent. Oh, there we go. There we go. We only get two seconds in. Bam! Dead. Dead, 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 man. Man, right when we're starting to get to be able to do some good shit, it just don't hold up. <laughs> let's try going back to like, uh, let's go to zero. Actually, let's go to eight. Nope. Nope, not any better. Assholes. Oh, I can't hear you. I think we're just uh, stuck. I don't think we can do any better than this, boys and girls. Start adding some processing and we're just fucked. Yeah, I mean, I doubt it'll even bounce. Like, we could try, but it's literally, we only have a few little plugins on here, but uh, the CPU is just not liking this. And I don't think that there's any way I can even overclock this CPU if I even wanted to. I'm going to 256. Let's see if that does it. Nope. 
Nope. Uh, can we cut something else somewhere else just so that we can get it to play a little bit? No, I kind of need that compressor. We could take, no, I kind of need all this stuff. That's the problem. Um, we could take this. No, let's take the beeper off of the hi hats, maybe. I just don't like it. Uh, what if let's just say there's something. Fuck! Why do we keep going to that stupid? Yeah, this sucks. 90s suck. Keep your shit. Can't do nothing on here. Well, I mean, you can, but... It's not, uh... This is the computer's is not... computer shit. I mean, if you were able to combine a bunch of stuff on an outboard mixer, probably. But, um... Like my, my normal workflow is definitely just not gonna work on this. But the cool thing is I got stuff working. That's a, that's an accomplishment considering how old this shit is. I got to play like a couple seconds more in that time. this thing. This reminds me of the days. I just want to, I just want to see if I can dial in the side chaining just a little bit. I love chaining. It's like my second favorite thing to do on here. Right, so I get to play a tiny ass loop. Hey bro, your CD skipping. <laughs> yes, I would have been so famous if I came up with this in '98. Side chaining, baby.
stupid. Come on, don't be a bitch. Alright, let's just let's just see if we can we just bypass it. Maybe we can just turn it down. Plugins off. I mean, I, I have like six plugins on here. Like, that's it. Fuck you, Pro Tools. It makes no sense. Oh my god, you're side chaining. I can't do anything if you side chain. Why, why no one came up with it? Side chaining your baseline. I'm gonna fucking play now. Come on, play! Smash my keyboard. Silence. Oh my god! It's playing! Oh! <laughs> Fuck you! Oh, you cocksuckers. Uh, Alright. Let's. I'm going to make a couple more attempts here, and then I'm going to call it a night, because uh, this is stupid. This is getting retarded now. Like, to be able to get something as simple as side-chaining, you can't even do that in here. It's just like... I, well, I mean, I'm glad you can. That's kind of cool. But it don't work right, you know? I wish I could, co I, like, if I could reduce this to, two, like, uh, half that, 22, I guess, 200 kilohertz, that would probably uh, give me what I need. We could probably, sh yeah, I mean, like, maybe if I, if I take this out of here. I mean, I'm literally just having to t turn everything else off. No, it's not liking it. All right, well, no blue screen of death, but I think that's because the CPU is only limited to 85%? Seriously? That extra 5% would be really helpful right now. It probably would have given me enough to... Have Stella get a groove back, you know what I mean? Let's take this stupid, take this compressor off. It don't love me. It just don't love me. I wonder if we, um, you know what it could be is that it's not like in the looping of all this. So what if we take these out? Let's take duplicate of these kicks up here and just drag their asses down. How's that? <laughs> That's it. It doesn't like to loop. It hates looping. It doesn't like the cans. It hates the cans. I found the Achilles heel of Pro Tools uh, 511. It doesn't like to reloop its shit.
to the other one. So now that we have that, and we realize that it is stupid and it hates looping, let's uh, let's see if we can side chain everything. Let's side chain the world, man. Save the world. Save the whales. Save everything. <laughs> It's me again. All right, that's it. We're done. So you can do, I guess the verdict is in 1998 on Windows 98. Well, this is probably like more like 1999, which is the year I graduated. Um, you could do some shit that you can do now. I mean, the the foundations there on this stuff. It like if I had a more powerful computer, this is on a, like a Dell Dimension 4100. I don't know how much these things cost in 1999, but I'm pretty sure this wasn't the highest end. I, I've seen Pentium 3s that are a gigahertz, you know, and that would that would probably get you a little bit further down the road. Uh, some more RAM would probably help, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I mean, the cool thing is some of the shit that you do now, you could still do back then, just no one was doing it, you know, specifically the, the base side chaining stuff. Well, I mean... I didn't say no one was doing it. There's probably some people doing some of that. But um, anyways, uh, yeah, that's cool. That was a lot of fun. I've been recording forever, so I'm going to go to bed now. And uh, thanks for checking out the channel. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you have a vintage DAW that will run on Windows 98, let me know what it is. I'll see if I can test it out just for fun. Anyway, this was a nice little project to do. It's cool uh, setting up stuff without any any USB is uh, interesting. So um, let's see. We're going to do Roll or not Roland. We're going to do Ableton 4.1, I think, next week probably. And then uh, we might revisit Reason just because the, in that tutorial or that uh, look back at Reason 2.5, there was no MIDI working because I was using a K6 processor. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, thanks again. It's Marshall, and I love you guys, kind of, sort of, um, a little bit. Not like that, though. Like, as a friend, you know, whatever. All right. Um, yeah, talk to you guys later.